see you all. Let's start with prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this wonderful morning. Thank you that we can come freely to you, that we yeah, can come with expectation because you prepared already much that you want to tell us, teach us and train us and change us, heal us and, and strengthen us and refresh us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're here right now, that you um, yeah, look at us, that you watched us uh, and that you are happy for us uh, to come to your throne now. And uh, we, are, we say we thank you for this wonderful day and we are happy and we are looking forward for everything that you would do now. Amen. 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 Uh, the book of the Psalms is a very interesting book because on the one hand you say our prayers, they are words to God. And in the same time we realize the Psalms, they are also God's word to us. And in a special way, we see that in Psalm 26, uh, 27. And we can open that. Yeah, in this psalm, um, we see that it's not only we as human beings talking to God, but it's also God talking to us. So it's both ways. And it's very precious to realize that we should not just pray only what my heart tells me. Sometimes I meet people and they tell me, um, yeah, my prayer life is just, just as I would talk to you. And that sounds good because it's uh, familiarity and um, we, for us it's precious that we can talk to God uh, from the heart. But still, if I talk to people that, um, uh, that only um, um, impress that aspect, I realize I don't, need, I don't see supernatural life in them. And if we look at the Psalms, it's not only that we should talk and get everything, every emotion, every thought out of my heart and present it to God, but it's way, way more. It's way more um, because sometimes we realize we have uh, a need, we have a sadness, anything on our heart, and we pray and we pray and we pray. And after maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, there's still that need and still that uh, sadness in my heart. So I ask myself, how can prayer change my heart? And sometimes after prayer, we are even worse. Because we have presented God 200 problems and we thought over our 200 problems. And in the end, when we say amen, we still don't have any solutions. And yeah, we realize uh, that sometimes the way we pray is not uh, a prayer that really changes and allows God to change my heart. And this is very sad. If we are after prayer, if we are not refreshed, if we are not encouraged, if we are not having more the perspective that God has on all the problems that we have. And so it's a big an important question, how does prayer actually change my heart, change my view, change my joy? And there are different types of prayers and I don't want to value them and say this is more important than this. And we have, for example, we have adoration where we praise God for who he is, for what he has done. But there's also that time where we, um, yeah, um, <laughs> Bring everything to him that is my heart, every emotion, every sadness, every problem I present to him. There's always, um, should be there a time of silence where I'm attentive to what God wants to tell me. But there is also an aspect of prayer where I want to focus on this morning is that I see and take God's promises and start to believe them. And we can open Psalm 27. And I want to read the first few verses. It says here, Psalm 27, uh, Psalm of David, and verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. And we see that David is encouraging himself. And if you look through all the psalm, you, all, you only will find about five verses 
where he is talking to God. So normally we think, what is prayer? Of course, prayer is we talk to God. No, it's much more. It's much more than I just bring God my, my afflictions and my sadness and my problems and my feelings right now. What we see here is that David teaches himself. So the most of the part of this psalm is not David talking to God. And if you start reading that, you, you, you ask yourself, who is he talking to? Because he is always talking about the Lord in a third person. <laughs> like, you ask yourself, is there somebody standing next to him that he is talking about, uh, to him about God? Or who is he talking to? And he is talking to himself. We see la, 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 the last verse, the, uh, verse 14. He says, wait for the Lord. So he's talking about himself. He's talking to himself and encouraging himself and exhorting himself. Wait for the Lord, you could say, my soul. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. So he's not talking to God. He's talking and teaching himself. And we see nearly, nearly the same thing um, in John 17, where J Jesus is sitting at the table in the last dinner that he had with his friends and disciples. He, and the way he prays, we see a big part of the prayer in John 17 is not directly to God, where he does not speak directly to God. But he talks about what he, what he has done. He talks about um, um, how he sees himself, which identity he has. So prayer is a place where we should talk to God, of course, but where all we also should take God's word and teach ourselves. And I want to focus now on the verse 8. And I read from the English Standard Version. And it says in verse 8, You have said... There, so there's one of these few verses where David is talking to God. And he says, You, God, you have said, Seek my face. And my heart says to you, Your face, Lord, do I seek. So David somehow felt that command from God, seek my face. We don't find this command really very clearly in the Old Testament. But, of course, through all the, the, the dealing of God with his people, he says, I want to have that fellowship with you. I want to have that covenant with you. And not only a covenant where you serve me, but I want to have a covenant where you as a people, where you seek my presence, where you seek my face. And David answers this commandment in a, very, in a very simple and beautiful way. It's like an echo that God says something, God gives a command, and David says, like an echo, of course I will do it. God says, seek my face. Come near to me. And David's immediate response is, Lord, I want to seek your face. And how beautiful it is that if God says any commandment, says any word, if my reaction is as quick, as direct, and yeah, as from the heart as a, an echo is. I don't know, of, uh, probably you have uh, tested an echo. As a child, it's very interesting if you talk somewhere, if you shout into a valley, and if you hear your own voice several times. And it should be the same if we hear God's commandment. His commandment should bring an echo in my heart that says yes to it. Yes, we see in the New Testament, in Hebrews 8, a very clear commandment. And I think this verse, those verses in Hebrews 8 is the summarizing of the whole New Covenant. Here the writer to the Hebrews says from verse 10, This is the, command, the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after the time, that time, declares the Lord. So he is um, mentioning a verse in the Old Testament from Jer the book of Jeremiah where God already spoke hundreds of centuries before 
the new covenant came. And now what is the new covenant all about? It is all about that God says, I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. How beautiful it would be that I echo back this commandment to God. And I say, God, please do that what you want. Please write your law on my mind and write it on my heart. In the next uh, part we see, I will be their God and they will be my people. And if we answer back, God, please be my God and I want to be your child. The verse 11, no longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother saying, know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest. And if I echo back, thank you, Lord, that I can know you. Oftentimes we think, yeah, we have to study theology to be close to God. Echo back and thank him that it is possible that you know God in an intimate way. And the last uh, verse, verse 12, For I will forgive their wickedness, and I will remember their sins no more. And I answer back, Thank you, God, that you forgive my wickedness, and that you will remember my sins no more. So how is it possible that I really experience a prayer life that changes my heart? And I have three advices. First of one, get to know yourself. That sounds funny, but it's like in our teenage years, we, are, we don't really know yet ourselves. We don't know yet our feelings, how do we react. And it's, in some way, it's, uh, in the spiritual world, it's the same. If we come and if we get born again, everything is new for us. And sometimes we think, because we know the Bible a little bit, we know who we have become. But that's not true. Sometimes our prayer life reveals we have no clue that we have become a new creation. If I pray every morning, please God, be with me. Please God, help me. Please God, I need you. This is not a prayer that shows revelation about who you have become. It's not about words. God is not angry about words. But we should be um, sensitive of what words which revelation does my prayer give especially when somebody else is hearing me pray if i pray please god be with me people think it's not sure that god is with you but that's the deepest foundation of the new covenant that god is with you and that god is emmanuel so let's be careful what we pray not out of fear because god would be angry no of course not but of because my prayers, the words I speak, they lead me in the direction that my prayer life will follow. And if I realize oftentimes that after my prayer I'm not totally refreshed, I should check the way that I went in the last 20 minutes. Yeah, I am a new creation. I became a new creation. And how does a prayer life look like that shows in every word that I really and actually became a new creation. And then I realize that the promises that God gave me, we see in 1 Peter 1, that those promises, they are intended to change my whole being, that I actually live like a new creation. So all the promises, they are not just a little candy for bad times. They are not just, you feel bad, you think, oh... Everything is bad and nobody likes me. Oh, let, uh, let us open the Bible and let us uh, yeah, read a verse and then I feel myself a little bit better. That's nothing, that has nothing to do with the promises. The promises is not, are not there for you to feel a little better about yourself. The promises are there to show you a supernatural life that you are able to live. And this is much on God's heart. And so if God tells you, you are a new creation, which answer do you echo back? Do you say, oh no, I don't feel like, and look at my life, and other people don't treat me like this. And, hmm. Or do I say, I don't see it in my life yet, my feelings don't tell me yet, 
but I know that your word is true and I start to believe your word. And how precious it is if I start um, thanking God for the reality that he put in my life. The new creation has nothing to do with my feelings. It has nothing to do with my life that I live right now. It has everything to do with the spiritual reality that came in my life. That my life cannot change it, my feelings cannot change it, but they are waiting for me to believe it. We see in the first verses of Psalm 27, we see that David is encouraging himself. And he says in verse 3, Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Do you talk like that in prayer? Do you talk and receive the promises of God that you did not receive a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of self-control? Is that your focus, what God made new in your life, which spirit, which attitudes of the Spirit of God came into your life? Romans 6 says us, tells us that we should not consider ourselves as sinners. We should consider ourselves as a new creation. That does not mean that I take not responsibility for my failures and my sins that sometimes happen. But it means that I believe the word of God that I have actually become a new creation. And I, that I'm actually able to live a supernatural life. My second point is be your, uh, your best trainer. So the best encouragement should not come from somebody else. It should come from your private time with God. And it should come from yourself. So don't wait for anybody else to encourage you and tell you who you are. Look into the word of God and take those verses and encourage yourself. Because oftentimes there is nobody to encourage you. Maybe uh, quite opposite. People put you down. And who is putting you, putting you up? It should be yourself. Taking the word of God and telling yourself who you are. And you, the words you speak, the encouragement you speak, should always be above what you already live. So your prayer should not only be a revelation of the, of the um, place you're at right now. It should be above. Because encouragement are words that have more faith than you see in your feelings right now. Have more faith and more revelation that you see in your daily life right now. So the best encouragement should come from yourself. Taking the word of God. Echoing back the word of God. And my last point is understand the commandments as promises. Because we can feel quite bad and weak if we hear those promises. Uh, forgive everybody. Love your enemies. And if I understand that those words are not a word that wants to put me down, but that there's a word and a commandment that shows me what is possible with this life that is right inside of me. And I encourage you, take the word of God, write out all the promises, pray them. Don't be shocked that they are above your level right now, but take them as an encouragement and you remind yourself each day. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. I thank you that you want to encourage us this morning. And Lord, we want to yeah, check every word that we speak in prayer. There is a time of just pouring out our heart and pouring out our feelings, our sadness, our problems. But there's also a, a time where we need to stand up and encourage ourselves. Forgive us that too often we stopped prayer being totally uh, without encouragement, without power, without joy. Lord Jesus, teach us to take your promises, speak them out, believe them, believe in your word and believe that we actually are able to live them because your spirit is inside of us and because we became actually a new creation. Amen.